turbo, roll over. Roll over. Yeah, good. Well, that's not, I can't bend the camera that way. Roll over the other way. I'm trapped. The tripod has me stuck between chairs and tables. Hey, what's up, garden friends? You're a good boy. You're free. You don't have to stay down there like that, Turbo. Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It feels weird. I haven't picked up the camera to do a vlog in a long time. It's been about three weeks. I guess this isn't really a vlog. Garden tour time. August garden tour, which uh, this... There's not that much to report on. There's been some growth, but like for most people, we had a heat wave move through here that fried. It just fried. A lot of the garden cooked. For us here in St. Louis, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, 6A, 6B. If it's in a pot it's like these, this right here, giant palm tree down at the other end, those all go inside for the winter time. Have to specify that. I get questions. That's What's going on there? For us here in St. Louis, they said that our record was the most consecutive days in triple digits since 1943. Maybe it was 36. Something like that. I don't know. It was hot as heck out here. So hot that I haven't even been out here very much, which is going to make this even more fun for me. You know, when you go out of town, go on a trip, you're away for a while and you come home and you're just amazed at how much your garden's grown or to get to see what's changed. I haven't been around much. I've been busy with side quests for the last two weeks. And when I have been out here, it's just been to water the three plants that are out here that aren't on drip, which is just this palm tree, that heliconia, and that heliconia. And I've just been trying to keep my eyes to the ground because I wanted to be surprised after having spent all that time inside because of the heat and side quests, things going on inside of the house. I thought it would be fun for the garden tour to be like, hey, this is all new to me too. Which also means there are going to be some weeds and uh, some messes. Nothing new there. I don't care. Never try and feign perfection around here. It's part of having a garden. Sometimes things get messy. Let's start off with, not these. Let's look at what's been damaged first. Maybe we can focus on the nice looking stuff later. The biggest source of damage from the heat was back here. Are the sprinklers going to, I don't think they're going to come on. What walled myself away. Remember the Fort McNair chestnut? beautiful tree that I got back in the springtime. Turns out those do not like heat. Things over there looking like a burnt bag of potato chips now. That's It'll recover. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with it next year. It only gets part sun over here, which is fine for the Fort McNair chestnut, but those triple digit temperatures just absolutely fried that tree. This could be worse. Other plants triumphed. The mule palm and the milkweed vine and sweetheart lace vines, which are weeds, not really weeds, but they're weeds in my opinion that are taking over everything. Those seem happy. Bananas mostly enjoyed it. Even the orchids triumphed through it. Have a beautiful flower back here that's facing the wrong direction. Over here, say hello. There we go. Has some burn on it, but not much. Looking good. Little bit of scorch on the Albo Monstera, but it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it would be. Obviously, all the arbs well, they're toast. What little bit of a green they had left in them, that's gone now. Those are, they're dead. Anticipated needing to replant those anyway, so not the end of the world. Then the next most extreme bit of damage, I would say, would be with the hydrangea trees down here. Everything else, it's like, okay, there's like a scorched leaf and slowed down growth. That's been the main thing, is just things don't grow that much when it's triple digit temperatures. So, hasn't been a ton of growth on growth. Hasn't been a ton of growth on things for the last several weeks or three weeks, but they still have time. Still have a good six weeks of growing left to do out here. Let's go look at that hydrangea. Did I just yawn through everything I was just saying? Didn't even try and take a pause. Probably would have been more professional. Mm-hmm. See, there it is. That's a tree that's just covered in a whole bunch of burnt marshmallows. Never ever taken a beating like this before. This is a strawberry vanilla paniculata hydrangea. I've had these for years. Usually they look more like this this time of year with the lovely mauvish pink flowers on them. They start off white, then kind of go into a gentle green and then they fade to a pink. They're massive, just great big, beautiful hydrangea trees. This one gets more sun than that one. Not a lot, but enough to make a difference when it comes to extreme temperatures. These things happen. It's okay. It'll be fine. Just some crumblies. Not the end of the world. You can just shake that out, see? Just shake, shake it out, it's no big deal. And, oh good, the sprinklers are on. That that actually is good. This spot needs a good watering before we talk about it any further. Okay, all right, that sprinkler head needs to be adjusted. 
away. Yeah, they're looking thirsty. We'll get back to that side of the garden later once everything's had a drink. Are there water spots? Yes, there, there are definitely water spots. That's kind of pretty though. Not gonna work as far as making vids, but got a nice sparkle to it. Let's get this cleaned up and focus on what's in the shade. Okay. Yeah, the only other plant that I was surprised took damage was the areca palm. It fried. I already cut out some of the bad stuff. There's still some foliage in there that I couldn't reach, especially some that's way, way, way up high. This thing has taken some heat over the years. It's had this plant for, I don't know, eight years, something like that. We've had some extreme temperatures. Last summer it got so hot out here at the patio cracked open, but it wasn't prolonged. There were breaks. This time things just cooked. It was very specific too. You can maybe see if it will focus the sides of the fronds that were picking up re reflective heat from the patio, those are the sides that are cooked the most and the ones up top, well, they're just cooked from the sun. Happens, it's a quick grower. I'm not stressed about any of this. I'm just glad the plants are alive and never lost power, so the AC kept working. Those things are all blessings, considering what's going on around the rest of the country and the world this month, weather-wise. It was just hot here, not the end of the world. The white aspen dracaena, video prior to this one, I repotted this. The whole point of that video was more talking about soil and repotting plants than about this actual plant. But I did say in that video that I probably won't remember to update everybody, but look at the, it's right here. I'm updating. There's your update. Looks pretty good. Actually has put on some decent growth, just mostly what's in here. So not a ton. It's only been about three weeks. So I wouldn't expect that much out of it considering it just got repotted, but it does seem to be happy. It had very stalled growth. Not much had been going on with the plant. And that's why I repotted it into a mix that has some organics in it and got out of the cocoa core that it was in from the grower and already seeing results. Seems pretty happy. Knocked over my maxillaria orchid over here. And it started to squish on my Prince of Orange, which I don't think I've updated y'all on this one in a long time. Prince of Orange. I restarted one of these in the winter time into this pot and here it is. It had some setbacks. It got knocked around a little bit by the dogs and had to start it over again, but it's pushing out some new leaves, starting to feel nice and firm in the container, which is great. This one down here has done a lot of growing, really a lot of growing. I should maybe consider repotting this one. This is the uh, philodendron, oh, crap, I forgot the name, pink birkin. Still small, not showing the colors and stripes yet, but have put on a ton of growth since these got potted up in the winter time. They were just little things, about the same size as that little offshoot that's in there. I've had it down here hanging out with the Prince of Orange because the Prince of Orange has been liking the way the water's hitting it and the light, so I thought that those would pair well together. Some aeroid stuff back here. The Pink Glory has a new leaf. It is looking kind of thirsty, but I think that's just because of the heat. This has been a vigorous philodendron. I haven't had it long, but it's been growing really well. The Columbia hasn't done much of anything up until well, it looks like now it's swelling up, so hopefully that's going to push out another new leaf soon. It's brand new, so I haven't gotten to see much out of it yet. I'd like to see what its new foliage looks like. When it isn't foliage, it's been through shipping stress and all the stuff involved with having plants sent over from Ecuador. So no flowers on the Alpinia purpata, hot pink. That's this one. Talked about that in the last garden tour. I don't, I think the ship for that may have sailed. There just isn't as much light. The sun's shifted that time of year. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I'll probably just leave it in this container. We didn't have to talk about that yet. That's the September garden tour. The last time everybody will be seeing the palm trees. We can talk about that then. The Cascade Hula Pink. Hula Pink Cascade Begonia. I think it's just Hula Pink Begonia. It's a cascading begonia and it's doing very well. That is easily quadrupled in size. It seems to be a loving life up there in the trunk of the palm tree with the red mountain impatient that it looks so much nicer off camera on camera it's difficult to show how nice that plant looks hummingbirds have been enjoying it too i don't it's fine we don't need to talk about that one anymore i really appreciate it from these angles the siosa opened up a new leaf the thai thai constellation i need to get back here and do a sphagum wrap on the straight part of the stem to encourage some roots some growing roots to come out so that i can chop this thing and reorient it before winter gets here it's something i would like to remember to do in the next week or so i have a memo put down on my phone just gotta remember to do it the al adenidias adenidia palms not alexander palms they're looking pretty good nice swollen crown shafts that's what i want to see 
No skinny adenidias around here. Keep them hydrated. These are very thirsty palm trees when it's hot. You can just water these things like insanity. They will take up all that water and start to get those nice smooth round thick trunks and those nice big green crown shafts. If it's not hot, then that will kill them. So don't do that if it's not hot. They need the warmth. Everything that that pot was, uh, that palm was underplanted with, it's looking pretty good. The tropical storm colocasias. Nice color to them. I'm really enjoying this one leaf right here. It has a fun curve to it and a lot of character. I'm loving all the different shades that are in there, various greens, and there's some light pink inside the veining. Drop my exposure down a smidge. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Eh, it's not that obvious, but it looks cool. Those are just tiny things when I planted them. And they're looking pretty good. The spring clean caladium is in here, but it's starting to be choked out by the alpinia that's over here i should maybe maybe move these containers just scoot them down like four or five inches in each direction might open things up because they really are starting to encroach on the pot in the center here and i think that that's going to become a problem here there's only like a month left with these pots though so maybe i should just leave it and just let them grow and do their thing i think that would be fine nothing to report on with the bamboo that's not doing anything this time here just hanging out looking like bamboo. I have a whole bunch of things, things, plants set out, out of frame that are going to be planted up the next week or two. So I'm trying to be careful with my camera shots to not ruin any surprises. Not going to make so I can't have the widest angle shots, but that's okay. Working on them, doing just fine. I moved this one, talked about it to probably too much in a video, talked about it a lot. And uh, it seems to be happy over here. I don't like how far it is out of reach that makes it more difficult to check on it. But with that heat we were having, I needed the aeroids to be back into the shade. They get a little bit of morning light, but not very much. The Vici, I, I think would definitely like more light. It's just sitting there. Whereas the Warwick Yanum is just sitting there, but it's sitting there nice and sturdy and tall. Whereas the Vici, it just doesn't look happy. I could give that one more light. Musa no no, looking pretty good. The leaves started to pink up on this one. There was a lot of white in there. I wasn't sure what was going on, but gave it some time. It turned pink. This has gotten some sturdy growth on it. It was a little loose and wobbly. I had it tucked away back there in the shade because I was paranoid about hurting the plant and overexposing it. And then I decided that I should move it out, get it more light where there's more airflow so that it has a nice sturdy stem because it needs to be repotted. That needs to go into a much bigger container at this point. And this is probably a good time to do that. I'll probably work on that this weekend. Not much to say with this Moose of Florida right here. It's not the most attractive Moose of Florida. Got a little bit of variegation in it, but nothing that's all that impressive. I wouldn't say that this banana is any prettier than like a Zebrina or a lot of other bananas. There are tons of other bananas that are prettier than this. There's the Pink Aulene, beautiful one. This is nice, but the variegation is just kind of meh on it. Not crazy about it. Freckles looking good of course the freckles croton pulled through that heat like a champ didn't skip a beat never even wilted down oh and freckles isn't on drip either i was hand watering the four plants it's just not a demanding croton so i didn't want to waste the water pressure putting a drip head on it you can see it's been doing great nice and big healthy croton doesn't require much colocasia doesn't need to be transplanted and moved curcumas they're about finished up for the summer you can see their flowers are fading back i think i might have one fresh flower in here yeah that one's still looking pretty good that one looks nice but it's tucked away so much you can't really appreciate it and then there's another one down here on a different plant but again can't really see it because it's tucked away these planters the deck planters this one specifically it's just it's not looking too hot it cooked i don't know what to say other than it just it got hot and then it fried it's kind of the theme with things this year you know and i think it's turbo look at that light look at you you look so handsome in that light even with your eye boogies it's important i think after extreme weather to sit back have a good look at the garden and focus on what persevered what triumphed through those hard times because those are plants that are ones to keep in mind when it comes to moving forward with projects in the garden. This is, well, these are tropical, so there's not much I can do with them in the garden, but just some interesting things to point out. The parlor palm over here, that was initially over here in this corner, kind of by the McDowell, I forgot to give an update on the McDowell. It was around this corner, and I'll remember to update on the McDowell in a minute. Wasn't getting much light. I prefer the power palms just get light, filtered morning light, in shade throughout the rest of the day. They're renowned for being plants that love shade. Talked about these in a video not too long ago that was all about parlor palms 
And I'm pretty sure I mentioned in that video that I think that they typically are put into too much shade and don't get enough light. They figured during the heat spell, let's just leave it over here and see what happens. And I'm pretty shocked at how well this plant did. There's some scorch. You can see where there's some of that oxidation happening, photo oxidation. But considering triple digit temperatures for over a week, this pavement down here cooking all that up onto the plant, it really pushed through that quite well. So I'm going to adjust my sun reading for this plant. We're in that cure video I was saying, dappled white in the morning. Yet I, this could probably take some afternoon sun during the right time of year in the right location. Forget I said that, no, you'll burn your plant. I maybe just got lucky, I don't know. Just surprised with the results. And I do still think that people usually do not give these enough light and that's why they don't get enough growth. You can see, that this is too much light that it got right here. This was getting the same light as the coconut palm, as the oleander, as plants just about a foot and a half behind it that absolutely fried, that can usually take the light. That Ipomia back there cooked, this sun patience cooked. Hibiscus, the hibiscus is fine. And maybe a little bit of shade from this front on the coconut palm, but not all that much. Everything else out here is looking pretty good. I just remembered this because it's like, that's probably the last plant to talk about as far as damage goes out here. Everything else is just pretty much on pace with where I would expect it to be. As far as these deck planters are concerned, I'm gonna come out here and just give these a severe cutback. I'm probably actually just gonna pull all the annuals out, leave the hibiscus in them. Like this one over here, this is not doing anything for me. Having a sweet potato vine that's overgrowing everything that's the, I don't, it doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> I'd rather be able to see the hibiscus and the flowers that are underneath it. So that's going to go. It makes it more difficult to get in there and water everything and take care of things properly and watch out for pests. So that's on my list of things to do now that I'm seeing it. Cause that, it doesn't look good. It's wrapping itself around this coconut palm. I'm sure is not appreciating it. The coconut palms haven't done much growing. The spicata is getting ready to open up a new frond, which is exciting. It's pushed through that heat and done fairly well considering the green Malayan. Not much going on with that one. And then the, not a coconut palm, the McDowell. It's looking pretty good. I repotted this, I don't know, a few weeks ago. It was in a video. It had some really wonky growth on it and it is straightening itself back out. Seemingly enjoying its new setup that it has now. I don't think there's anything really left to talk about. You can just stand back and say, hey, look at it. You see it, things are looking pretty good. Oh, rabbit's foot fern right in there. Completely forgot about it. Did not get watered at all during that heat spell and it's doing great. Another plant to focus on. Nice sturdy ferns. Buccaneer palms. Gossia palms. Buccaneer palms, whatever you want to call them. They're backlit. How well can we see them? Hopefully you can see them well enough. Gotten some good growth out of them over the last month. They actually seem to appreciate the heat. It doesn't surprise me. Everything I've read about these palms says that they are palm trees that like it very, very warm. And that, that showed. They really started pushing out some new fronds and looking much better. They were on that struggle bus most of the year. They were not delivered looking very good. And I've been fertilizing them. They've been repotted into a fresh mix, but nothing really seemed to be doing much until that heat came through and they were just started singing and loving it. They like the heat. The strings are in here because the fronds were smacking people in the face and you walk through so has tied them up to get them up and out of the way. Everything they're underplanted with looks great. The tattoo orange vinca really done a good job spreading, which it shouldn't be doing, but the sun has shifted. So now they're laying more flat than I would have expected. Cora Cascade Strawberry also looking marvelous. I think that these are probably some of my favorite trailers for these pots that I've ever used. Let's see, just look beautiful a solid cascade of those shiny green leaves and the beautiful pink flowers. Vinca, I just, I love the flowers on Vinca and Catherine's in, in general, that fun star shape that you get. Something very cheery and happy about them. And they're so resilient and sturdy. Just an excellent plant to have around. I want to make sure to plant more of those next year. Not much to report on with the heliconias. It was hot. So they just kind of hung out and did their thing. I need to come in and prune off a lot of these old flowers. They're starting to uh, wilt back and die back. Not looking too hot right now. Variegated potato, looking pretty good. That's the agave potatotorum, the one that I cannot say the name of. Lonky, just a fun variegated, neat looking agave. Got that one in the spring from Plant Delights. It's looking pretty good. Cactus is filling out. 
also seems happy. Shell gingers. Wasn't sure how they were going to do in the heat. Yes, they're tropical, but they're also surrounded by pavement and they're not on drip. And I did water these two. Okay, so there were one, two, three, four, five. Five plants I was out here watering, not just the three, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I was never out here for more than like 20 minutes watering plants during that heat spell, maybe 30 minutes. That so wasn't very much. These are in a more moisture retentive blend, has a wetting agent in it. And uh, I was just experimenting with that to see how it would work with gingers because those tend to not always be the best for root development and need more, what is it, aeration. They don't have a ton of aeration in them. So I wasn't sure how the gingers would do, but I would say that they've done very well. This spot gets very hot during the summertime. It's evening right now. I can only film in the evenings right now because there's construction going on up there and it's very noisy and it's just weird walking around with a camera when there's dudes everywhere doing stuff like just staring down here and there's construction going on in the house there's just noise everywhere so this is when i have to film that's why the lighting's a little off but i think you know it's fine we just go with it there's normally a lot of sun right here and uh, these will fry in the summertime but that moisture potting mix really seemed to do the trick i think i've been watering these maybe once to twice a week if even it does take a long time to water them it hasn't they've been very 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 low maintenance which is not something you usually get with the gingers i could have put them on drip i have a drip line right over here but i just didn't want more drip lines running across the patio you can see this side gets more sun than the other so in probably about half an hour to an hour these should open back up and start to look more flattened and happy like that one on the other side the variegated electric orange sun patient it's well you see it. It was hot. It cooked. It fried. Doesn't look good. The palm tree looks good though. That Anidia. Gotten some good growth out of those. The cordelins. They didn't skip a beat. They're looking happy. Heck, even the regular impatients that are packed back on the sides and not directly in front of the hot pavement. They're looking pretty good too. So this needs a cut back. You can see on the inside, still looking pretty good this time of year. I don't know if I'll bother. I probably should, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's much of a point. There's only a few weeks of growing left on them. I wouldn't expect them to put out new growth. Here's the one on the other side. So these are the Miami planters. They got planted up in the spring with these double trunked Edenidias in them. This one's looking much better. Doesn't get as much light. That one over there, full sun. Just full blazing sun. Cook the heck out of the front of that pie. It is looking great up until those triple digit temperatures hit. It's good to know. I don't think that'll happen again. And if it does, let's remember to cut them back more. Maybe get some little umbrellas for them. Oh, they're impatient. They grow so quickly. It's just not something I'm all that worried about because they'll bounce back from it so incredibly fast. Borneo giant alocasias. They liked the heat. I wasn't sure if they would because they're pretty exposed right here, but they did some growing. The fence back there is five and a half feet, and these are towering pretty high above it. That biggest leaf that it's put out up there, is, that's probably a good three and a half feet from the bottom to the top, the one that's up there. Huge, just massive. They are loving the warmer temperatures. Impatiens and caladiums that are up here, ah, not much to say of them. There's some patients and caladiums they've been growing. These are all assorted caladiums, and this really surprised me. Look at this one. Don't normally see these in the assortments. Does that look familiar? That one right there, spring fling caladium. Don't normally see those in the mix, in the mixes. There's a little jumping spider in there. I'd zoom in, but I think it's dying. That's sad, I don't need to show anybody the dying spider. It's like something got a hold of it and dropped it over there. Another VGI over here <laughs> that I thought might like this spot because it gets more light than the other spot, but I think maybe a little bit too extreme. It's always a challenge finding the sweet spot for things. And it's that hot out. This is not the sweet spot. There's a really powerful mister over here. So it was doing great in this location until that heat hit. I just didn't think that it was getting that much light because when I would come out here to water, I'd glance over here and things were usually in the shade. But I guess it was just enough exposure that it cooked that leaf. But it's still looking nice and sturdy. <laughs> See, it's not moving. This is a new one that I got from Equigenera in a haul last month. Maybe the beginning of the month of August. I'm not sure. It's doing all right. Bismarckia, looking pretty good. See that there are some weed vines in here I need to do some cleaning up on. That's always a thing this time of year are the weed vines. Milkweed vine and lace vines, which are beneficial to have around. I'm not going to trash talk them. I just don't like them because they will take over the garden 
and I battle with them every single year. And I'm seeing right now up in these arbs, see all that white? That's not supposed to be there. I went to town this spring. I would say uh, once a week for probably a solid five to six weeks, I was out here spraying with the dead brew, mostly the back of this berm, because that's where a lot of them pop up, and in the garden bed for those weeds that they wouldn't be a big deal this year. And that really did work out. They're nowhere near as bad this year. There's only a few spots where I'm seeing I need to go in and do some serious work. Like over there, I'm gonna have to crawl inside those arbs and figure out where they're coming from and do some cutbacks with those. Things are looking nice over here. I don't come down here all that often because it's just so incredibly awkward right now. It's unfortunate because things are looking great. Mundula pothos hasn't done much growing, but it is certainly starting to do some moving. Now that's been moved over here and put onto a support, getting some growth out of it. Lots of weeds. Look at all those weeds. That's crazy. Where did those even come from? Those are the kind where I'm just going to snap them down. I'm not even going to try and pull them right now because I haven't been out here to put them in. At least cut them off at the source that they can't go to town and start flowering all over the place. Hey, look at this vine. That wasn't there a few weeks ago. And clearly it was there somewhere. It was probably down in there. And I missed it and it crept up everything else. There are game changer hydrangeas up here on the hill. There's nothing to see with them. They just got planted this year, so there'll be more to report on those probably maybe next year, but right now they're just hanging out. That gate's there to keep the dogs from running through the laurels because they like to run through the spot and it's worked fairly well. It's not the most attractive thing, but it's the first thing I've found that's making it so that the plants aren't constantly being trampled. The impatience that are down here are just doing wonderfully. You can see they are starting to lighten up on their flowers. Not as much going on with their blooms as there was before, but that's because the sun exposure has changed. They aren't getting quite as much sun, but even with the amount of light they're getting, still looking really good. And they're also out in an in-between, in a bit of a rest right now. Coming closer, you can see there are lots and lots of buds on them. They're just at a chill out space right now. I'd imagine about a week or so, these are going to flush back out and be just full of color, even more full of color, I should say, than they are right now. I love those impatience. They look so good. They got absolutely huge considering how late they got planted. Remember, if you watch the other garden tours, I had to replant this area multiple times because of having to do, well, various things out here with the laurel hedge. Laurel hedge, there's nothing to report with it. Little bit of damage in there, but not much. That was damage that was already there from transplanting them. Or not transplanting them, just planting them. They did some growing, which I wasn't expecting. And uh, that's all I need to say. The lighting's not good enough to really talk about them right now. There isn't much to say. They're growing. They did fine with the heat. So nice and green. So that's all good news. I don't, do I need to talk about it? They're just beautiful. Kind of scraggly because it was hot, but looking pretty good. Purple candy impatiens mixed in with the electric orange sun patients underneath the strawberry vanilla hydrangea, tropical storm, colocasia. I love how when these get to a certain size, like I showed them with that other one, they get a fun curve to the leaf. And I haven't noticed that in the pictures I've been seeing, so maybe I just got a weird funky bunch. Here's a better look at a nice healthy, <laughs> healthy edge. This one does have some heat damage on it, but not much. Much larger, more beautiful strawberry vanilla hydrangea tree. Absolutely massive. This looked so good this year. Even with the burnt flowers, I still think it looks fantastic. Next year it'll look even better when I'm able to chop this up and get it re-rounded because right now everything's growing and leaning this way and by the time I noticed it, I think it was just too late to correct it. I didn't want to prune on it and sacrifice all kinds of flowers. So I said, that's fine. It can be wonky this year. We'll fix it next year. Don't need to be perfectly symmetrical. That type of hydrangea never would be. The gingers, finally, putting out some growth. They were slow to get going this year, but now that they have gotten going, they're really going. These are a combination of white feather. Yes, white feather has a variegation on the outside and silver arrow, which are more green and they're not giving me much variegation, but everything I've read about them says it takes about three years to get to see the variegation on those, and they're on year two. So hopefully next year, get to see some variegation. Look at how high they're coming up though. They've done a good amount of spreading. Would like to see more over here in the middle, but I can always chop and move and put new ones in there to plug in the gaps. It just, it looks nice. 
imagine next year when these are hopefully double the size coming up over this wall of impatience. Won't that just be beautiful? I don't know if I'm going to bother with the caladiums next year. The impatience get so big they tend to dwarf them. I don't know, maybe I will. They have a nice touch to them. This is a beautiful caladium, by the way. A fun lance shape. The long lacy type leaves, not ones you usually get in the assorted bags. That's what I always buy. I just buy assorted bags of caladiums from Sam's Club in the springtime. That's a fun one. Don't normally see that. It's nice to see it. To see some variety. Smooch begonia, perennial begonia. Spreading, looking pretty good. Time traveler hosta. Went through some rough times, but it's bouncing back. Between the heat and the storms, this whole area got flooded multiple times. It almost got drowned, but it pulled through, came through all right. And set Morelli eyes. So these, they've been weird this year. The two that are closest to y'all, to me, they've done a good amount of growing. Hello, shadow. The ones on the inside, not so much. And the ones on the inside get a little bit more light. Not much, but a little bit. I don't know. I'm not mad about it. They look fine. I mean, they look really good. They don't just look fine. They could use a prune, though. Need to do a big time prune on these. Hello, hummingbird. I don't know if that's going to show on camera. It's having a drink from the crocus bee and the heliconias. The plants to have around for the hummingbirds that you can see where there's some leaves that have dropped down in here and fallen. You need to come and cut those out. That'll help encourage them to flush back out with some nice new growth. Some of my favorite bananas. Can't go wrong with the Morelli eyes. They have so much color and texture to them. Oh, the Pharaoh's masks. They look pretty good too, don't they? Considering the heat, I made sure this area stayed pretty wet. I did all that through the sprinkler systems. I didn't have to do much at all. So the Alexander Palm did have some scorch, mainly on this trunk right here, but otherwise it's pushed out new growth. It's kept on producing seed. There's a giant clump of seed that is popping out from that inflorescence up there. Those things are falling all over the place out here. But the next storm we have, it'll probably knock the rest of those down. And this garden bed has been, uh, I should find a different angle so that my shadow's not in everything. This garden bed, I've been doing Binder restructuring. I pulled a lot of the mulch out because the growth on some of the plants over here has been really weird. And sometimes if a mulch is too heavy and the wrong type of mulch, it can acidify the soil. And I have been wondering if maybe that's what happened back here with some of the Hedichiums. But the Hedichiums, they would start to look fine. And then we'd have a bad heat spell and they would start to look bad again. So to me, that means that it's probably more of a, they were just cooking over here up against this wall more than anything else that just yeah regardless i need to get the mulch out because i've been uh, trying to check the angle of the slopes in here for the drainage because i would like to do something more fun and exotic in this spot next year and in order to do that i'm having to get a precise measurement of the direction of flow for water I have to make sure water is not going to be collecting in this middle. That's basically what that comes down to. So I had to get all that stuff moved out of there anyway so I could get down to the soil and see what direction things would be moving. That's why the yard waste bin, all this stuff is out here because I've been hacking away and pulling at things in there and trying to just have a look and see how things are doing. I need to come back in here and do another cleanup on the bikini teenies because they're starting to hide the sun impatience again. I have to do that every few weeks. It was just so hot out here, I didn't bother with it. And I figured they're just gonna add shade, which they could really use when it's that hot. So I left them and they look nice. They look pretty. It's a nice looking plant. They move around in the wind and they collect the rain and drop the rain forward. But they also are impeding on my beautiful wall of <laughs> impatience, which has a trash can in front of it right now. I'm well aware I'm a busy person. I don't know what to tell you. They got real life stuff going on out here. I didn't clean it up for the video. As soon as I'm done, I'm getting back to work. So I didn't see a point in that. Technically yard waste not trash if that makes anybody feel better it's just leaves and sticks in there the impatients didn't get a rejuvenation prone most of the annuals out here didn't this year that's normally something to do generally in july when i like to do a rejuvenation prone come in and cut the annuals back let them flush back out and they start to look nice vibrant and full again things were behind this year i don't want to talk about that too much i feel like i've talked about every single garden tour about how it was just a really weird long spring and there was a drought and la 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 most of y'all who are watching probably experienced the same spring that i did so the annuals were behind and they're just now to the point of what i would consider to be the july garden tour so i didn't do any big prunes on them didn't see a reason to this is well this is pretty who are you oh the heptacodium temple of bloom I need to prune on this banana big time, don't I? 
that's really blocking things. Big time blocking things. That heptacodium needs some space. Needs to be able to breathe. Key Crush Summer Rific Candy Crush Hibiscus. That's who this is. Took a break from blooming, but it's flushing back out now. I was worried. I was thinking I was going to have to move it, but it's still putting out some flowers. So that's a good sign. Oh, and the Typhonium Gigantiums. Talked about these in a video about how sometimes when it gets too hot, they can cook. And a couple of the leaves on them did fry, particularly the ones that are down here closest to the ground. They cooked, but the rest of them are still looking pretty good. I was surprised to see. One thing that was a bummer about the heat, other than, well, you know, all the obvious things, is that this Hedicium, one of my favorite plants I have out here, the Flaming Torch Hedicium, bloomed during that period, and it was so hot that the flowers only lasted for like a day and a half if even, they just fried. So we didn't get to have that beautiful show of orange flowers I look forward to every year. There's still some. They have some smaller growths that are still blooming on the inside. So it's not a complete and total loss. Still getting to see the flowers, but that was a bummer. It's one of my favorite parts of summer is walking out here and having this wall of just beautiful, vibrant orange flowers. And you wait so long for them to bloom and uh, they, just, they just cooked. <laughs> but the plants themselves are looking pretty good. Lots of growth coming out from the bottom down below. This clump has probably doubled or tripled in size this year, which means next year there'll just be an even better show. And again, there's still small growth on the inside that is doing some blooming. So it's not the end of the world, but it's just the big show. Most, yeah, most of that got fried away with the heat. Chinese fan palm doing great in this spot. That thing has been throwing out leaves left and right. The Xanthosoma lime zinger, it did have some scorch from the heat. I don't even care about that. It did a ton of growing. It very much has enjoyed the heat. Seems like the hotter, the better. It has just been throwing up leaves left and right, which is great because it had just been sitting still with the cooler temps we were having this year and that heat spell came through. There was one in July that started to trigger it and then it got so hot out here that plants were dying and it was just <laughs> loving life. That's the thing. Okay, some plants fried, some plants thrived and it got them moving. There's always some good to take from things. This Adenidia is putting out new leaves and it's getting that nice thick trunk on it that we like to see just like with the other ones this is the single trunk Look how big this one is it's really tall it's over the door it's real big look at that this whole spot i think that this side of the garden where you come out the door everything right here this is probably about the best i think it's ever looked since i moved the croton when i had the croton over here that was that was a vibe it looked pretty nice over here but the Xanthosoma said that weird. You know what I'm talking about with the Chinese fan palm and the various colors of pinks and oranges. It just looks great. And I love the way the Nanook Tradescantia is flowing out from underneath these impatiens like a wave onto the patio. Doesn't that look cool? And this isn't supposed to be here. This, the bikini teeny colocasia that's sticking out in front of everything. These things pop up all over the place out here and I usually get them pulled up no problem but this one is really rooted down there so I'm just going to take the leaves off and I'll have to remember to come out here later and get the rest of that with a shovel that's better if that was bothering me there we go what a nice view even better when the flowers were open on that ginger looks really great still looks pretty nice though especially with the heliconias didn't work out quite how I wanted it to. They're not getting enough sun. I suspect that's why I didn't plant them all the way across, but they're still looking good. Like the way the bits of orange are popping up on the inside. You can see it, there we go. Beautiful. Always gotta love the heliconia flower, the hanging basket. This is, hasn't been together all that long. It was looking pretty rough when I put it together and it didn't really appreciate the heat, but surprisingly did okay. I was expecting the Elysium, Elysium, the Elysium lobulary in there to just fall apart, but it didn't. Having things on drip really makes a big difference. They're looking pretty good. Love the trunks on Edenidias, especially when they're the really big, thick white ones. See those this far north that often, but it looks good. Variegated hibiscus, this got moved over here and it's looking pretty good. Seems to like this spot. This Moose of Florida is not getting very much light. I might need to move it. Because when this one's been getting light, it has had some pretty nice variegation on it. Not like some of the most supreme variegation, but it's looked pretty good. I think I probably just need to move it. This is that time of year where when the sun shifts, I have to rearrange some things outdoors. But otherwise, it's still a nice, healthy looking plant. Look at those red candy sun patients down there. 
I love those. Beautiful, beautiful sun patient. Beautiful plant, love the red flowers. Robolini's looking pretty good. Didn't fry, but it got some cookage on it with the heat. Not a ton though. And she says the croton, starting to see some white spots in there. Gotta start treating for mealybugs when the sun shifts and these aren't in the light anymore. The mealybugs move in so incredibly quickly. You gotta stay on top of that before it's time to move the plants inside. The queen palms that are over here, I was expecting these to have some burn on them since they're up against the house and there really isn't, at least not very much. In fact, this one right here started to open up a new frond. I did triple the watering on both of these during the heat spell because they really needed it and that made a big difference. They started to push out growth, which means it's possible I may have been underwatering them this entire summer. I don't know. They were getting a lot of water, so that's hard to imagine. They're trees. Trees need a lot of water, but I don't, I don't know. Seems unlikely that it wasn't enough. Have some mandevillas over here that are starting to do their thing. The heat worked in their favor. They were just sitting still. They're starting to move. I would like them to be bigger than this by this time of year, but I just potted those up like two weeks ago. Maybe I'm being impatient there. The only thing left to report are the bananas. This banana lost its head <laughs> last month to a storm, knocked the palm trees down and had to cut it back and it's flushed back out and it's looking great. No surprise there. It's what we would expect out of the banana. Everything else that I didn't talk about, I can't remember to talk about everything, but that's anything that needed a report or I just thought was worth reporting on. Things are looking pretty good considering the temperatures and how weird things have been with the drought and then the cool. You know, triple digit temperatures just a few days ago and today I'm outside in a hoodie this morning because it was like 68 degrees, supposed to be in the 50s in the next few days as a low. That's just what's happening. Uh, I'm trying to make the most of things, enjoy the few weeks of nice weather that we have left with the tropicals outside. There's still lots of nice weather left, but with the plants outside, at least the big palm trees, not a ton. We have about six to seven weeks until those are going off to storage into the greenhouse. So trying to make the most of it. I meant to put that away in the hose way before filming this. I totally forgot. Obviously it's right there. We'll talk about that. The pot that doesn't want to focus in the next video. Doesn't matter. Video after this one, talk about pottery. There's some other fun things going on. Lots of things to plant. That I've been hiding and like in the shadows tucked away in this video. Still lots of stuff and projects left to go in the garden. It's finally that time of year where things are cool enough. I'm not worried about putting things in the ground and then cooking. Feels good to be able to get a move on all those things once again. Comment down below, say hi. What's going on in your gardens? How did your gardens fare through the extreme weather of August? Whether that be hurricanes, drought, extreme heat, fire. August was a rough month for a lot of people. We had some heat not that big of a deal so i'm not really complaining about some burnt plants it could have been so 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 much worse or just comment down below and say hi i love talking to everybody it's, it's you're not going to focus at all come on camera do your thing no Did that overdo it been talking too much probably i right, hope everybody's doing well having a great day a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye